Uh, uh, chapter 5, the last question was not clear? Yeah, 58. 58, okay, let's take a look at that one. Um, actually, uh, so yesterday and uh, the, the day before, what, what did we cover? The day before, was, what did the last one Okay, and then um, actually before, before that, yesterday was nomenclature. Yeah. So you guys know the uh, the rules for what? Yeah. Rules for ionic. And then, uh, yeah. So you learn the names of the cations, or starting to learn the names of cations and anions? Okay. Yeah. How about the uh, bi uh, binary molecular compound? Yeah. yeah. That's the good too. How about the, um, you know, when we were discussing uh, end of chapter five, which was the um, atomic theory. Do you guys know isotopes? Yes. All right, so last question in chapter five. Homework. What number was this? 58. 58 uh, says the atomic mass of lithium. Atomic mass of lithium on the periodic table is 6.94 U. Lithium has two natural isotopes with atomic masses of six and seven. You know, when I look at this, let's just round it. So one isotope weighs six, the other weighs seven. It was a 50-50 distribution. What would the average be? Let's say half were six, half were seven. The average would be 6.5, right? And so when I see something like this, 6.9, I'm thinking 90%. It's 90% of which isotope? Well, it's gotta be 90% of seven. It's much, much closer. And so if it was 6.8, it's 80% seven. 6.7, 70% 7. Does that make sense? You know, just based on uh, where it lies between these two. Well, calculate the um, percentage distribution between the two isotopes. Now, what they want us to do is they want us to actually do a calculation. And, um, you know, as far as calculations go, what were the three uh, main uh, methods that we talked about in calculations? The biggest one is going to be Big, biggest one would be uh, calculation uh, method or problem solving method. The biggest problem solving method or the one that's used most frequently is? Multiplication. Not multiplication. I mean multiplication we use for all of them. Yeah, yeah but, but what's different? We have, um, we have dimensional analysis. We have uh, this is actually it was a long time ago, probably. Well, in, in empirical equation, which would be the method would be that's already forgotten. I mean, That's a, that's a, remember for nomenclature, you gotta drill yourself. You know, the, the way to remember it is drill yourself every day, you know. Every day, it makes it so much easier than just trying to cram the, the names in a short time. You know, the more time you give yourself, the easier it is. Algebra, algebra and the final method is? Dimensional analysis, algebra, dimensional analysis, algebra and? These are the three problem solving methods you, you use for the whole class, basically. It's only three. Dimensional analysis, algebra, and? Substitution, but substitution in relation to what? Well, um, well anyway, uh, you know, I, I, I unfortunately, you, for time-wise, I can't um, review. I'd like to review every day. I'd like to review from the beginning of the class because I think it's very beneficial. But time-wise, we can't do it in class. But time-wise, you can do it at home. It doesn't take you that long, you know. And then you can focus on what you need to focus on. But the final method was, um, you know, the two equation, two unknown, or simultaneous, or you know, um, multiple equation type problems. 
And so this one's not a dimensional analysis. This is an algebra, and, and algebra, but it's a little bit of a twist. So you know, we we have the atomic mass. The atomic mass is equal to what? What's the algebraic equation for atomic mass? Well, it's going to be the abundance. You know, and this could be fractional or decimal. Of uh, isotope A times the mass of A, isotope A. So we call it the isotopic mass plus dot dot dot. And so we only have two isotopes here. And so um, what is the abundance of uh, isotope A? Do we know it? Do we know it? Well, calculate the percentage. So they want the percentage. You know what this percentage is? Is the um, is it the decimal? Is the percentage decimal? No, a percentage is not decimal. A percentage is this. If they want, like, if, if it's twenty percent, what does that mean? Well, that means we need the fractional, and so we need the percent. We'll just call it x, right? X percent, or x out of a hundred will be A, isotope A. And so this will be x out of 100 will be um, isotope A. What is isotope A? Isotope A weighs 6.10512 U. This is for lithium-6. That's isotope A. And so x would be the percent lithium-6, correct? Right. Plus y will be the percent lithium-7. And so you know, so if it's 50 50, then x is 50, y is 50. If it's 90, I think it's 90, it's going to be 90% y. So the y should be 90, x should be about 10, They're based on our ballpark estimate. But we don't want a ballpark estimate, we want a more um, precise calculation of this. And so we're, we're going to go ahead and do this. This is for ISO 717016. Zero zero U, and so this will be lithium seven. Are there any other isotopes? No. no. But do we know? I mean, do we know the atomic mass? Can you give us the atomic mass. The atomic mass is six point nine four U. That's the average atomic mass. And so what do we have? We have two uh, two unknowns and one equation. So this is the the third method of problem solving. You know, if algebra, if, if it's not a simple solve for one variable, then we gotta solve for two variables in this case. This is about as complicated as it gets in this course. Right? And so this is why I said, oh, there are only three problem solving methods in this class that you encounter, you know, after you look at them all, um, basically. And, and then, um, how are we gonna solve for X and Y? Algebra, but um, this two unknowns. Um, if you have two unknowns, what do you need in algebra? And so, more specifically, how, what technique in algebra did you use to solve substitution. substitution? But you know, we're missing something. What do we substitute? We have two unknowns. We have two unknowns. Therefore, we need two equations. So this is one equation. What's the second equation you're going to generate? So, so this is a little bit more complex than straight algebra. Straight algebra, we just solve for one, we'd be done with it. But this one, we, we're going to have to generate a second equation. Can you think of a second equation to generate for this? Uh-huh. Yes, good. X plus Y. If, if X is 50, then I already know what Y is. If X is 50%, Y must be? If, if Y is 90%, then X must be? How did I know that? How I knew that was because there are only two isotopes, and those two isotopes have to add up to 100%. Correct? And so I could substitute one or the other, and, and on, it doesn't matter for this particular problem which one I substitute. Maybe we'll just solve for this one for y and substitute that. And so y is equal to 100% minus x. And then we substitute it in there. Do you want me to finish it or do you want to finish this? 
finish it. Right. We'll finish it. 6.94u is equal to 100% minus x over 100 times um, 6.10512 plus, oops, this is wrong. X, this is x, x stays x. Sorry, this one changes. 100% minus x over 100. It's actually 100%, but um, it's a 7.101600u. This is mu, yeah. All right, so um, what we're going to do is we're just going to simplify this um, algebraically. So um, it's just going to come out like this 6.94u. Okay, this divided by 100, we move the decimal 2 over. So this is going to give me 0.061. 0512x. Okay, uh, this is also u, ux. Plus, all right, and then we'll, we'll do the same thing over here. What we're going to do is um, we're just going to multiply this. And so 100 divided by 100 is 1, right? 1 times 7016 <coughs> is just going to give us 7016 below. U minus, okay. And then 100 divided this by 100 will move the decimal 2 over. So this is going to be 0.071600ux. Wouldn't that be one? I'm sorry? Wouldn't the second x have to be a 1 because you're solving for x in terms of y? Would the second x have to be y? Yeah, because you have to isolate x in terms of y and you solve for y minus x, which you already have in terms of and then you have one variable changed by one. Because that's changing the value of x by putting y as x. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. I see. No, I mean, no, I could flip it. We could solve yeah, for no, x instead. All right, so uh, we have to keep track of sig figs, which is always a, an issue. So trying to keep track of sig figs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, let's, I want to keep these as positive as possible. So I'm going to subtract 694 from both sides. Yeah. I'm going to subtract 694 from both sides, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract this and add that. And so if I add that over here, I'm going to get 0.070160U. Okay, and then I'm going to subtract this. So um, I'm going to go in here, subtract this, 6.94, 6. Point, oops, 7. Point, 7. Point, sorry, 7016 Zero zero u minus six point nine four. Okay, and then uh, uh, keep track of the sig figs. Since this is a subtraction, I'm only allowed two decimal places. That's fine. I'm going to carry some extra zeros so I can just do the subtraction in my head. So zero minus zero 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 minus zero zero six minus zero six. But that six is not uh, <coughs> significant. And then this is going to be uh, oops, this is going to be eleven minus four, which would be seven. Then uh, this should be nine uh, minus nine, which is zero, zero. So I get 0 0.07 sub six u. That's on the left side. Now on the right side, what I'm going to do here for the right side is I'm going to take. Um, well, actually, this I took this. I tried to do this from both sides. So on the right side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this. Well, and I'll subtract this and then add that. So I, I got the sides mixed up, sorry. And so I add this, 0 0.0701600, and subtract this, 0 0.0694, zero. And so well, it, it looks like it's just going to be the same thing, 0 007 Okay, I'm allowed um, one extra digit. Okay, this is a little bit confusing. So I'm doing minus 6.94 yeah. minus 6.94 from both sides. Okay. Yeah, so it would be. 
and then I'm doing. I'm sorry. It would be you subtract it with from this. Yeah. Yeah. And then what I'm doing is I'm adding this mm -hmm. to both sides. So plus point oh seven oh one six zero zero, mm -hmm. and then I'm subtracting this from both sides. Minus point oh six one oh five one two. And so if I subtract that, that goes away, right? And then um, if I, uh, actually, what did I do? Yeah, I think you wrote down the wrong numbers. Did I write down the wrong numbers? Yeah, because for that one, you put point zero six nine four again. And those don't have the same, they're not the same values. Yeah. Point zero, oh, oh, I see. Point oh, zero six one oh five one two, sorry. Point zero six one zero five one two one zero five one two. Okay. All right. Now I got it. Uh, let's do the subtraction. So this is going to be ten minus two is eight. This is significant because we're allowed this many decimal points. This is going to be nine minus one is eight. Five minus five is zero. Uh, zero minus zero is zero. Um, ten minus one is nine. Six is zero. 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 Okay, is that right? Yes. Uh, okay, you. Okay, is this right? Yeah. All right, this is going to be x, this is going to be x, this is going to be x. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to solve for x. The u's are going to cancel. And so the x is going to be this divided by this. Is that right? No, I screwed it up because this is going to come out you know, less than 1. So this means 0.0091088. I probably should have used a calculator. What is it? doing this to keep track of six things, but basically it's going to be this. Um, 7.016 minus 6.94. Unless I did this wrong. Did I do this wrong? Okay. No, that's right. This is right. Okay, I'm going to just combine these two terms here. And so what I'll do is I'm going to have... Um, 0 0.061, 0 0.061, I must have screwed up the algebra because the number is coming out funny. 0 0.061.0512 minus 0 0.07, minus 0 0.07016. All right, so let me, um, let me insert a step here. And so I'm going to combine the terms. 6.94 u is equal to point, um, point oh six one oh five one two. Actually, all the u's cancel, so let's just get this as x. Okay. Oh, no, that's what I just calculated. I don't need this one. Sorry. This is going to be... Minus point oh oh nine one oh eight eight x. So I combine the x terms plus point seven oh one six plus seven point oh one six oh oh. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that to both sides. So I'll get point oh oh nine one zero eight eight x is equal to. 7.01600 minus 6.94000. And so let's do the subtraction here. I'm going to be allowed two decimal places in this subtraction, so I'm just going to do this 7.016 minus 6.94 equals 0 0.076. 0 0.076. Left with here. 
Okay, now it looks right. Uh, I got it mixed up for some reason. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide both sides by this. And so 0 0.076 divided by 0 0.00910, 91088 equals 8.343. All right, so what is X? X means um, the percent lithium-6. So it's going to be 8.343% lithium-6. Therefore, okay, let's subtract 100. Uh, it's going to be 91.656% lithium-7. Okay. And so I just got, uh, let's take some time to finally got it. All right, so what they did was they round, they didn't keep track of the sick fix <coughs> like we did. Um, but it's all right. Uh, theirs is more, th theirs is fine. Well, they got 91.7% lithium-7 and 8.3% lithium-6. Um, we could have double checked this. Uh, the way to double check this is just plug this back into the original algebraic equation and see if we get the same average atomic mass. All right, other questions? Number 31, chapter 5. Do you know what section that's in? Maybe five, six, no. no. Five. Five, five. The atomic masses of the natural isotopes of neon are 19.99244, etc. The average of these three masses is 20.99259U. The atomic mass of neon is listed as 20.197U on the periodic table. Which isotope do you expect is the most abundant in nature? Explain. Okay, this particular one is. Um, this particular one would be a bit more complicated if we had to figure out the percentages. Um, because we would have uh, one, two, three, three isotopes, which would mean three unknowns. If you have three unknowns, how many equations do you need? Three. Three equations. So this one would be a lot more challenging. And you'll see that in all the problems in Chem 4, they never go beyond two equations and two unknowns. Two equations and two unknowns would be the max. Right? Like this particular problem here, two equations and two unknowns. And so this is just an estimate. You're just taking a guess. Uh, you know, which one, if the average is 20, which of these will be the most abundant? This is about how much? 19 or 20? 20. 20. This is about 20. This is about 21. 21. This is about 22. So if the average is 20, then the most abundant should be? Oh, is the average about 21? Oops. If the average is about 21, no, the atomic mass is. Wait. I asked, I asked, I Wait asked a minute. And then I didn't <laughs> Wait a minute. The, 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 I see what they're doing here because the, what they're doing is they're taking a straight average. If you take a straight average, 20, 21, 22, what's the straight average? 21. But this is not a straight average. We're taking a weighted average. So I would completely ignore it. This number is ridiculous because this number is totally meaningless. This is the straight average. We don't do straight averages. We do weighted averages based on population, right? You know, let's say you have a one $100 bill and, well, uh, no, that would not work. No, uh, actually, that would probably work. You see, um, if you had one um, $100 bill, and one $50 bill, what would the average be? $75, right? But let's say you had one $100 bill and 10 $50 bills, what would the average be? 
the average would be much closer to 50. See, um, what they're doing is they're taking the straight average. Uh, if you take the straight average, 50, 100, the straight average is 75. We're totally ignoring the population or the number. And so that's what this is. This is $120, $121, and $122. The average is $21, right? But if you had um, lots of, uh, see, this is why I went straight to here, because what is the atomic mass? The atomic mass is the weighted average based on how many of each you have. And so based on how, well, this is the weighted average. The actual average is closer to 20. So if the actual average is closer to 20, that means the one you have the most of is 20. And so it's just a weighted average. The weighted average is going to be close to the one that's most abundant. And so if, if you had, a, let's say you had $150 bills and one $100 bills, then the average is going to be very close to 50. So an appropriate answer to that would be Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I don't like their answer. But it's all right. The, the, this one should be the most abundant because the average is very close to the, this one here. Does that answer the question for that? This is the ballpark. So what I added them and then I did multiply by three. Yeah, if you uh, if you add them and divide by three, you're going to get 21, right? Or 20.99. But they got, but that's totally wrong because they're not telling you how many of each there are. You know, um, that's the population. Let's say you had 100 atoms. If one third of the atoms were 20, one third were 21, and one third were 22, then no problem. That's what you have. It's one third of the combined. But that's not what, what's present. If you have 100 atoms and 99 of them are 20 and the rest, you know, then it's going to be very close to 20. Um, in fact, we could see this one, we could actually see. I think, do they have neon in our table? Let me just double check here to see. Now, neon's not in our table, but here is um, neon. And sometimes you look at the book. This is the population. So if you have 100 neon atoms, 80, or actually that's like 90, 90, more than 90, more than 90 out of 100 will be neon 20. And then if you look at 21, that looks like about you know, 6, maybe. If you look at 22, that's about 10. You know, and so the 21 and the 22s have much, much fewer, um, much, much smaller population, much, much uh, fewer uh, number of those particular atoms are present. And so when we look at the, um, if we go to a table, you know, where can I find a table of isotopes? Tell me one place I, I can find a table of isotopes. Please tell me one place I can find a table of isotopes. No, no. You, I mean, out of a book. Out of a book. What book has a huge table of isotopes? You have to pay for it. It's, it's kind of expensive. If you, if you want the latest data on the table of isotopes, then you need the 2018, 2019 edition of this book. What is this book? Okay. I know that was a couple of weeks ago. But, or was it a couple of weeks or was that last week? I remember You remember. You kind of remember it, but you kind of don't remember it, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, that, I, uh, that I can understand. It's like, tell me, well, tell me about how much it was then. 180. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. 
Oh, come on. $6.56 from thriftbooks.com. It's the 56th what edition. What edition is it? 56th edition. 86th edition is only fifteen eighty five. Because they're out of date. It's because they're out of date. You know, some people want the latest. Uh, obviously, you want the latest information, so you want the latest edition. I don't even know what the latest edition is. But, um, oh, it's the 99th edition. Pretty soon we're going to be on the 100th edition, I guess. It'll be interesting. Is that, is that like 100 years? Of yeah, 100 years of this book. The 99th edition is 185. Only 12 months. <laughs> they should put it on sale to celebrate the 100th edition, uh, the 100th anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll have to buy one. The 100th edition. They should make it $100, 100, 100 this CRC has a huge table, but um, you can find uh, abridged tables on the line, of course. And so if we look at the table, table of isotopes, we can search it. And we could save some money here. Although we might not have the latest uh, data. You know, these are, there are lots of different table formats. Do you see? All these are isotope tables, different ways to visualize the isotopes here. This, you know what they call this? They call this the sea of isotopes here. This is the sea. And that's the island of isotopes there. The sea. This, this is all in nuclear physics um, that they trying to figure out this. You see the pattern there? I'm trying to figure out the pattern and predict these types of things. There's a lot to it. But you know, we have to be careful because we want the table of isotopes with the natural abundances. A lot of table of isotopes don't have the natural abundance, which is, you know, the other data that we get. You know, we get two things from the thing that measures. Well, it's the thing that measures. What's that called? The thing that measures the weight and the abundance. A balance? Um, all these are too cut off. I need a, a more thorough table. I should bring in the CRC. We have a CRC. I have a personal copy of the CRC. But um, I don't think these tables are comprehensive enough online. <laughs> Although, um, not here, but in our Chem 1A book, we do have a more comprehensive table. It's Chem 1A book is by Pearson. And, uh, let me just bring that up. That the, the point is, uh, we could go to the table, and what we'd see is we'd see you know, the percentages that they got from the graph. That graph came from, you know the graph I just showed? Do you know what that graph is called? Does somebody know what that graph is, is called? The one with the three peaks in there, the three bars? Nobody knows? Another thing that you want to do is you want to read the little caption. Um, this is what it's called. It's called a mass spectrum. That's the graph here. From mass spectrum, we can get the precise masses. Um, it's not shown here, but we can get the very precise masses here. And we can get the relative abundances here. So the mass spectrum, where does the mass spectrum come from?
Well, since this is a chapter five, we'll try to review a little bit, um, since I, I skipped the review on this. What does the mass spectrum come, where does the mass spectrum come from? I mean, no, I mean, what machine prints out the mass spectrum? It's called the, the, what kind of spectrometer? There are lots of spectrometers. We, in chemistry, we use all kinds of spectrometers, and they all have different names. Not an ionic spectrometer, but kind of. It's very simple. This is kind of, you know what it's called? It's called a mass spectrometer. A mass spectrometer generates a mass spectrum. Uh, that's it. So these come from a mass spectrometer. Maybe if you saw one, if you saw one, then maybe you might remember it. Have you ever seen a mass spectrometer? Let's take a look at a mass spectrometer. You know, what, what is it, all this stuff about magnets and do you see all that? Does this kind of look familiar, this kind of stuff? No. Well, I know it's it, it kind of looks like that tube, you know? What is that tube? The tube that bends, what was what, the what beam that got bent? Electron. Electron beam, which is called a cathode Cath ray. ray. Yeah. This is, looks like a cathode ray tube, and essentially it is a cathode ray tube. We put magnets there to deflect, but now we're not deflecting electrons, we're deflecting different um, atoms based on their mass. How many isotopes do I see here? I see one, two, three, four, five different isotopes of different masses. Which one's the heaviest? This one's the heaviest over here, this one's the lightest. And then it depends on how many atoms strike the detector. That's going to generate the peak height. The more atoms that strike, the higher the peak. The fewer atoms, the lower the peak. And then by calibrating this, what do we calibrate a mass spectrometer with? What do we calibrate a mass spectrometer with? We need a vacuum for a mass spectrometer, but what do we calibrate a mass spectrometer with? What, do, you, do you go to France to, to, to unlock the vault to, to get the mass for the mass spectrometer in France? Maybe, maybe that just didn't connect. Um, but what was it locked in the vault in France? Kilogram. The kilogram. But we don't want the kilogram. What do we want? We want the U. So maybe the U is locked in some mini vault in France. Is the U, the one U uh, mass uh, locked in a, a mini vault in France? No. Tell me how we calibrate the mass spectrometer. This is the one definition I wanted you to know. If you don't know there's a kilogram mass locked in a vault in France, then that's fine. But you should know this. The hydrogen one? Kind of close, but not. The, hmm? it's, it has to do with carbon, yeah. They use graphite. They use graphite, yes. Put graphite over here. Graphite and then vaporize the graphite. Vaporize it. And then, yeah, what is, what is graphite made out of? Carbon and, uh, is there only one isotope of carbon, or are there multiple isotopes? And so which one isotope? Yeah. Well, anyway, um, so what's the answer? What's the answer? The, the answer. The answer, the, well, the, let me ask you a question. When were you going to uh, review this? Were you gonna review this right before the test? Or, or just, come, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, Later today. I mean, if you're, think about each day that passes, it becomes more and more fleeting. You know, that memory, that image, whatever else, you know, it's already gone. Um, which is typical, I mean, it, this, is, this is typical, but um, yeah, it's, it's carbon-12. Carbon-12 is defined as what? Solid 
No. 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 It's 12 times a year. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, th this is the this is the the basic schematic of mass spectrometer. What it looks like is this. It's simple. It's just simple. We have a mass spectrometer. We have a mass spectrometer over in that room over there, and it looks like this. This is a mass spectrometer. Inside there, you have that. You, do you see what's on the display screen? Display screen. A bunch of peaks. I know we just had that exam, so maybe chapter five wasn't on your radar, but you know, the thing is you don't want to fall behind. So even when there was a test, I would still um, do the same thing, even with the new material, because I would just do my notes. I wouldn't read, necessarily read the chapter, but at least I would re reread my notes, you know, so it um, stays fresher. This interesting, you know, um, this interesting, like, uh, the, I, I uh, watched this video about the, some memory champion in England. Like, I, I forgot what number he ranked, but, you know, and he's talking about how he, he's memorized the periodic table. He's memorized all the masses, all the average atomic masses on the periodic table. But I thought, how useful is that? To me, that's not that useful. You memorize some of them, but you don't need to memorize them to too many decimal places because it's not that useful. And so then I was thinking, well, you know, what's much more useful? Um, I think, you know, in um, much of what's much more useful is the arrangement and that kind of stuff. But uh, he had some good suggestions for memorizing things. And one of the things he, he suggested is he had a, a pattern for a review um, for things he really wanted to remember. For things he really wanted to remember, he, re he reviewed, I think, the day after, and then one week, and then two weeks after, and then one month after, and then every three months. And then he said he'll remember it for the rest of his life. So it's kind of interesting. And you, of course, you can't review chemistry every day, you know, um, unless you're taking, if you're taking this class, you should be able to. You should have a certain amount of time set aside for this class. But um, you can see, you know, how fleeting memory is. We just talked about that, what, less than two weeks ago. Or if even. And so, um, anyway, let's move on here. Any other questions from the homework? Pretty soon, it's going to be too much. Pretty soon, you're going to hit a point where there's just too much stuff, you know, you, to um, kind of learn, you know, um, and your your short-term memory can only hold so much information. Like they say, it can only hold something like seven or 10, 17 digits or something like that. And then, and so if you, if you try to get into your short term, it's going to be um, too much to cram. It's got to go into the longer term. But going into the longer term, um, pretty soon, um, it's going to be hard, much harder. So now's the chance. I mean, we're still at the beginning of the semester. It's only six chapters, uh, 19. So you, if you learn everything, then you're going to easy, easily get an A in this class. Like easily. Well, uh, speaking of isotopes, let's do something here. Since uh, I have this, uh, you know, smaller table here that uh, we can look at. Um, let's see, what was a smaller table? Do this. Why don't we have a little? Uh, just since we haven't had a quiz in a little bit, let's have a little quiz. This is going to be uh, 
based on this table here. Let's name this. Uh, we can just name this beautiful we'll just be practice, but uh, what's the name of it? Carbon monoxide. This is a binary molecular compound. It occurs in discrete molecules. All right. If there's some carbon monoxide in the air, are all the carbon monoxide molecules the same? Okay. How many different carbon monoxide molecules are there? Well, um, tell me. Okay, um, list all carbon monoxide molecules found in nature. Let's just say found in air. Polluted air, but just air. <laughs> Shrink it down a little bit. This is the whole thing. Is that okay? Uh, I see. Uh, this thing. Oh, we're going to see what else. Okay. There it comes. We could uh, they'll give you a hint here. Um, the uh, different molecules of carbon monoxide that we find in air, uh, uh, do they have the same chemical properties? You should be able to answer this. Yes. Do they have the same chemical properties? Yes. So what's different? The physical properties. The physical properties. Right. Like, specifically. Just a very simple physical property. Mm -hmm. You could talk about melting point, but we don't get it pure. The melting points would be different, you'd be right. But um, more simply, the difference is in terms of what's an obvious difference between them? Mass. Mass, uh, as far as physical properties go. Neutrons would be a particle. Neutrons wouldn't necessarily be associated with. I just want you to list the different ones. You don't have to get into heavy details, but just um, tell me. Yeah. Somebody finished? No. no.
I'm sorry? That's the only question, yeah. How many are there and what are they? No, carbon-14 is not included. Well, no, no, you, you just write it down. <laughs> then, uh, then just uh, tell me uh, we what they are. We should take this point and give it to everyone in the class. Well, we could, we could do two things here. 